Thank you so much. But the best is yet to come. You guys, how much longer can I go? Hayes White, Remy, what shall I do, you guys? <sighs> I'm trying to make light of it because this is actually so serious. I, I, the Lord help us. So I got this clip. I found this video from this guy's channel. None of these Qurans existed in the 7th century. They only begin to appear in the mid 8th century and up until the 9th century. In August 19, Jay Smith was in a live stream with Alf. You know what? When I heard this, I was so embarrassed. <clears throat> I was so embarrassed that I couldn't, I couldn't believe, like, what? You're telling me the stuff, the claims that Jay's been making all this time? And all these, you know, outlandish claims that can easily be refuted. Like, what? I just like, hello? So I had to research it for myself. Because I didn't want to come across like, I'm believing everything this man is saying, or believing everything that girl is saying. I had to go and find out for myself. And do you know how much time that takes? It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and I'm very exhausted at this minute but let's continue let's see what this Muslim dude is saying apparently he's engaged with Al Fadi and Jay on a couple of their shows and they just block him because he said he was able to provide evidence he wanted to back up his claim but they didn't want to hear it so is there more to this yes there is this is what I'm trying to say once I deal with this subject I'm not coming back to revisit it again I'm absolutely exhausted Fadi. They were, as usual, spreading their ignorance to their followers. The show was titled Livestream with Al Fadi, debunking the 30 Qurans. I was actively participating in the chat room and literally confronted Jay Smith on his claim. Let's see what happened. Bronze that have been existed since the 8th century. Notice I'm not saying 7th century, because they only begin to appear. Follow the evidence. Yeah, you just follow this. This is the first of all of them. This is the first. I want to emphasize. 36. Let's address this point first. Here, Jay Smith claims that the earliest reader was Ibn Amr. He said 736. In the previous video, I've exposed Jay's deception and showed you how he used the date of the death of the readers in order to push them away from the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And this is just one example. He said here that Ibn Amr was the first one in 736. Ibn Amr actually died in 736. I wanted to expose Jay's ignorance to his followers in the chat room. So I asked this question. How do you know that Ibn Amr is before Abu Jafar? Let's see how Jay is going to answer this question. Or do we just? Here is our Muslim friend again saying, how do we know that Ibn Amr was before Abu Jafar? Well, but is the date for Abu Jafar? Yeah, you see, they don't do their homework. Abu Jafar is 748. Right? Ibn Amr is 736. Now just look at the maps. Exactly. Which comes first, 736 or 748? Well, yeah. then he's asking, how do we know, how do we know which is early? If he didn't know the difference between 748 and 736, yeah. Yeah. which comes first? Then it's obviously he doesn't know his mathematics. Absolutely. Literally, uh, let's... Well, he took a bait, didn't he? In order to prove that Ibn Amr was before Abu Jafar, he compared the date of death of Ibn Amr with the date of death of Abu Jafar. Ibn Amr died in 736, Abu Jafar died in 747, therefore Ibn Amr is before Abu Jafar. Now, I know very well that Ibn Amr was before Abu Jafar, because Ibn Amr is 15 years older than Abu Jafar. Not because he died before Abu Jafar, according to Jay, Ibn Amr is earlier than Abu Jafar because Ibn Amr died in 736 and Abu Jafar died in 747. And this is very ridiculous. Let's take an example that most Christians will be familiar with. Nabil Qurayshi died in 2017. Ravi Zakaria died in 2020. By Jay's stupid logic, Nabil Qurayshi is earlier than Ravi Zakaria. Or we can also say that Nabil Qurayshi is earlier than Jay Smith because Nabil Qurayshi died in 2017 and Jay Smith is still alive. I mean, how would you react to someone who says Nabil Qureshi is earlier than Ravi Zakaria or Nabil Qureshi is earlier than Jay Smith? Someone who's using people's date of death to decide who's earlier than the other. What would you call that person? All kind of names, right? But Al Fadi has a slightly different. The mask. Exactly. Which comes first, 736 or 748. So, Osama, I have a, a word of advice for you. Your head is in the sand. Use a shovel. Get your head out. Use your brain. It works. Activate it. Go and do your research yourself. We're not. No, they weren't mocking Nabil. I don't think you're listening. Are you listening to the stuff I'm showing you? He wasn't mocking Ravi Zacharias. He wasn't mocking Nabil. Oh, please just listen. We want to get to the truth. We want to get to the facts. And there's so much evidence. Back and forth, we can go. But please listen to what on earth the data is pointing to. It's about the data. I'm going to do for you when I hold your hand, okay? It doesn't work like this over here. You've been doing it probably for all of your life. Wake up from your deep sleep, my friend. So in this meltdown, Al Fadi accuses me of not using my brain. I'm the one who's not using my brain, because I'm not using the date of death to determine who is earlier than the other. This is quite ironic, to say the least. But don't bother yourself with Al-Fadi's pathetic meltdown. 
believe me, it's going to get worse, as you will see later in this video. Because in the chat room, I was making fun of their silly arguments. I was exposing their stup using the date of death to determine who among the readers was earlier than the other. Let's get going. But did you notice, look at the dates, we keep on reminding dates, not one of these grounds is from the 7th century. Amen. They are all from the 8th century or 100 years later. Uh, all of these are 8th century, none of these are 7th century. Everything that we're looking at comes post 692. So don't trust me, I could be lying. Please, 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 you go up to Wikipedia, put it on, and then... I hope you understand the argument so far. I'm, this is why I'm so disappointed. I'm, I'm just very disappointed. When we stop and consider the methods he's using, they're... Uh, there's so many fallacies with it, and it's not, it's not genuine. You're not being genuine with the data, Dr. J. Smith. You're not being genuine. And this is what this dude was trying to tell you. But, of course, you don't want people to see that. You're putting him in the corner over there. I get it. I get it. You think all Muslims are bloody mental when they're making crap up, right? But for me, I want to get to the facts. I'm interested. I'm not interested in the emotional whatever. I want to know the facts. Is it true? Is it false? I want to know that. And that, for me, has exposed you to be a pathological liar because you're fooling your Christian audience. You're not fooling anybody in the Islamic world. This is why I'm so embarrassed. I'm disgusted. And yet we put you guys up on a flipping pedestal. Well, you need to come down off your high horse and repent. False. Just look and see who these get out writers are. Realize that the first 10 go from 736 up until, well, up until uh, 844. So we're talking about the mid, the beginning of the 8th century up until the mid 9th century. Jay claims that none of the 10 readers lived in the 7th century. And I confronted Jay with this comment. Abu Jafar ibn Amr Azam ibn Kathir lived in the 7th century. Let's now listen to their response. Here's, here's Osama, by the way, and he's saying Abu Dafar, Ibn Amr, Asim, Ibn Kathir all lived in the 7th century. Okay. Let's now start counting their straw men. The 7th yeah. century, let's look at the dates they died. I don't know where he gets his information from, folks. Put him in timeout, please, because he needs to go and do his research. Let's go through it. Nafi died in 785. Is that the 7th century? He doesn't even know what 7th century is, actually. Okay. They may have been born in the 7th century. Where are they going? In fact, he was born in 689. That means he was 11 years old. Was he doing his work when he was 11 years old? Irrelevant. I didn't mention Nafi. Is he saying that Nafi, Ibn Kathir, Abu Amr, Ibn Amir, Asim, and Hamza, and Kasi all knew the Prophet? Now, one of them knew the Prophet. Irrelevant. I didn't say they all knew the Prophet. Remember, al Qasai was born in 737. When was Muhammad died? 632. Irrelevant. I wasn't talking about al Qasai. Hamza, al Zayd was born in 696. That's four. He was only four years old in the 7th century. Irrelevant. I didn't talk about Hamza as yet. Abu Ahmad died in 770. That's the late 8th century. Irrelevant. I didn't talk about Abu Ahmad. The fact that he's trying to say that he knew Muhammad. Listen, that idea that he knew Muhammad was only introduced in the 11th century. Irrelevant. I didn't say that they knew Prophet Muhammad uh, They uh, come to these shows intentionally just to distract you from the main issue. He knows there's a problem. He's not really oblivious to that. But the way they try to uh, dilute the issue, they come up with uh, you know, claims like this. Uh, oh, they're all in the 7th century. Uh, they were all witnesses to the, everything. Irrelevant. I didn't say they're all in the 7th century. They're all witnessing to everything. Muslims are still going to make these claims, like he just did, that these are the ones that Muhammad received. Be Irrelevant. I didn't say that these are the ones that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam received. I just mentioned four names and I said that they lived in the 7th century. Why don't you just address that? Why do you have to throw all these straw men? Nafi died in 785. Is that Hamza al Zayyad was born in 696. Al-Qasai was born in 737. Notice that he read the date of birth of other readers, except those that I mentioned. Remember, I mentioned four names. Ibn Amr, Ibn Kathir, Asim, and Abu Jafar. Why didn't he mention the date of birth of Ibn Amr, Ibn Kathir, and Abu Jafar? Because they were born in the mid-7th century. Ibn Amr was born in 641. Ibn Kathir was born in 665. Abu Jafar was born in 655. So he stared at the paper for a few seconds. Then he decided to pick and choose in order to save himself embarrassment. And to be fair, the only one that he addressed was Asim. Look at uh, Asim. He was born in 700. That is not the 7th century. And he died in 745. So... But even that one, he got it wrong. Jay here relied on the English Wikipedia page of Asim. It says that Asim was born in 700 AD, which is clearly false. Asim was the student of Abu Abdurrahman Sulami. Abu Abdurrahman Sulami died in 693. Asim was born during the Caliphate of Muawiyah, which lasted from 661 to 680. Within these 20 years, Asim was born. Jay tried to address Asim because he thought that the information he got from Wikipedia was accurate. Unfortunately for Jay, even Asim lived in the 7th century. Now let's see how Jay would try to shift the goalpost. I would like any Muslim to give me proof that any of these seven are, are doing their work. They may have been born in the last uh, 10 years of the 7th century, but they did not do their work in the 7th century. All of the writings, all of these books, that start to be up here in the 716 Look, up, you up guys, till, hold on. Uh, 805. Up to 805, from 716 up to 8. So the purpose of me showing you 
these videos is to for you to know these arguments that are these allegations that have been presented by Jane Hadun, they've been addressed. They keep addressing it. They keep debunking it. It's ridiculous. I'm just I'm shocked. Another thing, I believe this whole theory has been plagiarized from earlier works. Now bear in mind I've been looking into this what, two weeks? Two weeks I've been looking into this. Now I've got some documents here. Hold on a minute. Let me get them up. <clears throat> I don't know if I should come to that now or later. This publication, for example, is from 1998. Way before. Hathun thinks she discovered anything in 2016. My disgust, my disappointment, feeling like someone's just burst your bubble, I can't even express to you. Because somewhere, I really thought, these guys, it's alright, they know what they're talking about. That's not my field. They're specialists in their field. I'm sure they know what they're bloody well talking about. But they don't. They're plagiarised stuff and they're telling you she's discovered it. This whole thing has been in their discussion, has been within their academic research, literature, scholarly um, work, publications, you guys. This is nothing new that Hatha and Jay are presenting to the Muslim world. This, this is why they're laughing at you guys. Please, have some credibility. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will reconsider and stop going on about this nonsense and go back to the basics. Go back to the gospel, to the Great Commission. You have untold amount of resources at your disposal and you're wasting it. We don't have time to play games. Stop your obsession with Islam. Stop it. Go back to the writing board or the writing board and reconsider. Clear the deck, you guys. Clear the deck. Anyway, going on. I want to go back to this. I think we need to nip this in the bud. The crisis of faith. Now, do you remember what Jay Smith said? Do you remember what he said in the beginning of this stream? He said... The day in 2016, let me just show you. Pictures speak a thousand words, right? We're done with you for now, Steve. So in Jay's presentation, he had this on Pathando Fando Films, right? His most recent, check it out. He's saying, Muhammad Hijab was present when Hatun and Jay were parading like clowns, these Quran's. Jay was saying that Muhammad Hijab was having a crisis of faith on that day, right? He was like, come back, come back, Muslims, come back, come back, don't listen to Jay. But we don't see that in the footage, clearly, do we? The video that Jay has on his channel, you will be none the wiser, because it's just not actually obvious what hijab is doing. But thankfully, somebody had it. Now, have I got the right video up there? I'm going to play this, it's important you see the evidence. Today, inshallah, we will be looking at some interesting claims that Jay Smith made about Muhammad hijab. Make sure you watch this video till the end. And believe me, the level of dishonesty and shamelessness is going to blow up your mind. I mean, even by J. Smith standards, this is going to be very low. I'll be just very up. low. <sighs> so let's get into the topic. After the recent controversial interview that Muhammad Hijab had with Yasser Qadi three months ago, J. claimed that Muhammad Hijab asked Yasser Qadi questions on the Qiraat because he had a crisis of faith for four years. And that he this is crucial. This is another another thing that I discovered pathological lying. Blatant lying in your face kind of lying. And I've lost all respect for Jay, I've lost all respect for Hatun, I've lost all respect for the apologetic community. Couldn't find an answer. The apologetics that deal with responding to Islam. Let me just make sure I say that. So he expected Sheikh Yasser Qadi to give him the answer he had been looking for. This all started in August 2016 when Jay Smith and his team went to Speaker's Corner carrying what they called 26 different Arabic Qur'ans. <coughs> According to Jay, Hijab was there at Speaker's Corner on that day. It was the first time he has ever heard about these 26 Qur'ans. He tried to call Muslims away to make sure that they wouldn't see them. And eventually, he had a crisis of faith because he didn't know how to answer. Quite a story, isn't it? Let's hear it from Jay Smith. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, did, did everyone catch the uh, the Muslims there at the end calling everyone away from those 26 Qurans? Everyone, back up. Who because was the tall man there? Who was it? Do you recognize him, David? That was the mighty Muhammad Hijab. Dis 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 yeah, destroyer of destroyer of Yasser Qadi's career. <laughs> That was him in that crowd, and he was the one pulling all the Muslims away. That they were having panic, they were having a crisis, and I suggest that Muhammad Hijab is in panic mode as well. He was having a crisis, and he has still been in crisis for four years. And that's why I think I can't prove it, but I think that's why he wanted Yasser Qadi to put this to rest. Because mm -hmm. four years now, no one has been able to answer the question that he could answer back then in 2016. He had to pull them out of the crowd. He had to say, "Come to me, come to me." What would he have told them? Mm -hmm. What would he have shown them? He's calling people away, pulling them away. He doesn't want them to hear and see these 26 garages. And this is what Yusuf Qadi is saying. Now, here is Muhammad Hijab. We're now in 2020, and he wants him to answer this question because he's had a crisis of faith. Muhammad Hijab is having a crisis of faith since 2016, I'm sure. That's why he wants this question answered. <laughs> look at the, look who's in the crowd, and look who's actually pulling away the people, the Muslims who are there. It's Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab was in the audience. Uh, he was demanding that all the Muslims leave. He was there in the crowd when we first, you saw him there, in the crowd, you saw him there. And he's telling all the Muslims to come away. He has one hand, come away, the other guy's with two hands. Why was he telling them to come away? He didn't want any Muslim to see what we were showing, and he didn't want any Muslim to hear what we were saying. And he had a crisis of faith at that moment. You can see him, he has a crisis of faith. That was he actually made several claims against Muhammad Hijab. First, he had a crisis of faith, because it was the first time he has ever seen these 26 Qurans. Second, he did not know how to answer them. And that's why he asked the Asr Qadi to give him an answer. Third, he did not want Muslims to see the 26 Qurans. So that's why he was trying to call them away. Now, to investigate these claims further, we would have to go to the original video. And we will check if Muhammad Hijab had a crisis of faith, did not know how to answer them, and tried to hide them from Muslims. Let's go and watch. Wait, do you see the man with the beard who is standing next to Jay? That's Muhammad Hijab. Probably he came to persuade Muslims to leave. Let's keep going. Did you hear that? It seems like Muhammad Hijab is asking Jay Smith for a debate. But wait, he had a crisis of faith. And he didn't know how to answer them. Maybe he was trying to show off. He wasn't serious about the debate. So let's keep watching. Interesting, Muhammad Hijab is asking Muslims to shout, debate, 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 in order to put pressure on Jay Smith to accept the debate. So Muhammad Hijab is very serious about the debate. Interesting, Hijab is insisting on a debate. Do listen to him guys, he's asking Jay, let's debate this topic right now. Why would someone who doesn't know how to answer challenge you to a debate in front of tens of people? Scared, 
can see why you're angry. I can see why you're angry. I would be angry if I was a Muslim. Okay. 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 Okay.
hijab, Muhammad hijab, responded. I don't know why, but for me, it was a surprise. He he behaved like a gentleman. He didn't over speak her. He didn't overpower her. He was polite. He was courteous. He spoke very clearly, and he was so kind. And I was shocked. And I was at the same time, I was so disgusted. I was so angry. I cried because of the. I feel let down. I feel let down by you, Hudson. I feel let down by Jay Smith, and I'm disgusted with a lot of you. You put the name of Christ to shame. And for that, you need to repent quickly. But I doubt they're going to do it, you guys. I doubt they're going to do it. Anyway, I'm going to finish this clip. ...purchase and be read in more than one way. This is something which is new, yeah? I'm saying, no, this was something that was known to the fella. It's mentioned in the Sahih Muslim. It's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith. Uh, in chapter 25, for example, can you find me the ten different, sorry, the seven different ways that it was recited? That's not how the Ahrab works. Because what you're, what, you're presupposing, what you're presupposing is that in every verse of the Quran, there has to be seven different uh, transmissions or seven differences, yeah? That's not what the thing is, is. No one has ever said that. For example, and also, can I just say, I think the more I, I, I try to grasp what this whole thing was about, the more I begin to understand what Yasser Gadi was actually trying to say. He was saying to Hijab in that famous video that has been since removed, he was trying to say, don't bring this subject up in the public arena. Because those who have weak faith in the, um, in the Ummah, the Muslim people, those who have weak faith, they're not going to be able to understand. And it's going to shake their faith. But those who are more learned, more experienced, more mature scholars, they get it. Even though there are questions that are unanswered, let's just not talk about it in the open. That's all he was saying. And then you guys, Hadun and Jay, you got wind of that and you just ran with it like flipping idiots. I'm sorry.